Thank you very much. Nice to be back. Nice to be here in Australia, because I am Australian. You know, in some parts of the world, some parts of the world they can't tell. They think you're New Zealand or South African. And I always say, look, it's so easy. You know, the accents are so different. You've just got to know what to listen for. You know, the Australian accent is quite nasal and annoying. <laughs> and the New Zealand accent is more whiny and irritating. <laughs> and the South African accent is evil. People often think I'm, I'm going to be Irish because I come out of like, Kitty Flanagan. Oh, she'd be that lovely Irish lass with a beautiful accent, you know. And, and then I open my mouth and people go, oh, nasal and annoying. <laughs> but uh, it, it's because I, I would like to be Irish because be, then you'd have the beautiful accent. They're hurdy, 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 hurdy. Oh, they've got words as well, bless them. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you can't actually write jokes about the Irish. I've tried, uh, but it's impossible because in Ireland, they're living the joke. <laughs> now, I, I went there and I was at the train station. I heard this announcement. The man came on the, uh, on the loudspeaker there and he said, we regret to advise that the 1607 train to Drogheda is delayed by approximately seven minutes. This is due to the late arrival of the train. <laughs> And you know he's just enjoying making the words go big, isn't he? Yeah. Would you look at that? I talk and there it comes out there big. Oh, that's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. I'll tell you what, though. They're very proud in Belfast. Don't mess with them. Very proud people. They've got an exhibition, permanent exhibition in Belfast called Celebrating the Titanic, made in Belfast. <laughs> and when I saw that, I thought, they don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell them. I went in, I said, I'm sorry, there's been an accident. But they explained to me, they said, no, 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 they, they do count it as one of their biggest successes. They do, because by all accounts, that boat was full of English people, so. I do, I do have a... One travel tip for you, because I tell you, the best place I've been, right, France, right, got to go to Paris, and uh, very exciting, went there, and I was a bit intimidated because of the whole language thing. I'm not, I'm not stupid, like I've studied, I am a languagist, in fact. And, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, don't laugh at me, laugh with me. I know I was making a mistake, I know the words linguologist. And <laughs> the thing is, right, don't be intimidated by their fancy pants language, just have a go at speaking French. Okay, because there's nothing the French enjoy more than you having a bit of a bash at their language. They love it. <laughs> I like to get over there and give them a bit of bonjour. <laughs> uh, bonjour, madame. Uh, je, je would like uh, une bottle of wine. S'il vous plaît. Huh? And I swear to you, the woman, she just looked at me and she went, why don't you get out of my shop? You're being stupid. And I went, oh my God, I understood French. <laughs> so easy. But this is what I discovered about the French, right? Get this. They don't have a word in their whole language for apes. I know. It's okay. That's how I was too when I found out. <laughs> but the thing is, right, what they do is they use the same word for monkeys that they use for apes. They say, the monkey, le singe, the ape, Oh, I'm too tired to make up any more words. Le singe again. That's it, right? One word for two things, which you can't do, because my favourite film is Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and it, that's not the funny bit. And in this film, <laughs> right, Marky Mark, because I like the classic. <laughs> in this film, Marky Mark is walking along, and he goes, Eh, I can't believe the planet's being taken over by monkeys. And the big gorilla goes, Rah! Monkeys? How dare you call us monkeys? We're apes, not monkeys. There's a big difference between apes and monkeys. Ra! <laughs> now, you see, we all watch that and we go, well, yes, that is a very good point. But when the French watch that, and I have seen Le Planet des Singes, it looks like this. Eh, I can't believe the planet's been taken over by Singe. Rawr! Singe? How do you call a Singe? We are Singe, not Singe. There's a big difference between a Singe and a Singe. Yeah. 
what's incredible is that the French actually still watch that and go, yes, that's a very good point. <laughs> actually living in London which is wonderful it's cheap and friendly and uh, I can't get enough uh, I'm in a share house with five other people which I think is where you want to be at 35 yeah it's really good though because I like students <laughs> they're good people aren't they they're a bit like monkeys I always think you know, they're a little bit hairy and you can teach them stuff and there's always the danger they could throw poo just <laughs> I do envy them though, you know, it's, it's so great being in your 20s and stuff. So easy to meet people and, you know, if you want to have sex, you just go to a party and meet someone. You know, you get to mid-30s, you start going, oh, I don't know, maybe I should walk down that dark alley looking vulnerable. <laughs> I, do, I, I, do, I do think I've left it too late to have kids, which is a bit of a concern. I think you should have kids when you're young. You know, like 15 is when you should have kids. No, seriously, 15, come on. Teen mums are good. You know, teen mums are great. They're fast, they're quick, they're dexterous. They know how to move. I've seen them on the streets. They can suck on a cigarette, sip on a beer and smack a kid across the back of the head all in one fluid movement, you know. They're just... They're out on the streets like ninjas, aren't they? Just... It's great. Whereas if you wait until you're 35 or something to have a kid, it's too late. You've had too much time to think about it, you know, and you've, you've sat around reading all the books on it and you've had debates with your friends where they sit there going, oh, to smack or not to smack. I don't know. Ooh, what a dilemma. Ooh. You know, teen mum just goes, ah, oh, to smack or shake. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. What will leave less evidence? Because <laughs> the thing is, right, I saw this little kid, little kid, three years old, just drew on the wall with a crayon. I just drew on the wall with a crayon. And the mum, she was a mature mum, about 35. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Left parenting a little later in life, but really enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> So rewarding. The great thing is we've got the house, we've got the white furniture, the white carpet. Time to bring a child into that environment. <laughs> Super. Yeah. And look at your body. Look at how it just springs back to a pile of shit. <laughs> Super. Just wear your pants a bit higher under the bosom. Just tuck it all in. Oh, super. She watches her kid draw on the wall with a crayon, right? She comes over with bleach in one hand, a sponge in the other, and she says, Sarah, Sarah, sweetheart, did you do this? Did you do this? I'm standing there going, yes, you fucking did. I saw her. Sarah, did you do this? Did you do this, sweetie, sweetheart? Psst, psst, psst. There we go. That's better, isn't it? There we go. That's better, isn't it? I mean, I would be the same. I would come over with bleach and a sponge as well, and I would say, Sarah, Sarah, sweetheart, did you know your name's actually pronounced Sarah? <laughs> but your mum's pretentious. Now, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you? Psst, psst, psst. Spit a jiff in the eye. <laughs> because that's a lesson. See, they're not going to do that again in a hurry, are they? Because they'll be blind. Yeah. Oh, that's... Just, just before I go, I do want to um, just make sure that people don't think I'm, a, I'm against children. I'm not. Love children. Um, I'm, I'm slightly against mothers. I will admit that. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> Once they have a child, they can't talk properly anymore. They develop this weird voice where they talk like a mummy. And of course, you can have a normal conversation with your friend and then they get this. They go, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm just going to deal with this. Jordan, no. <laughs> Mummy says no. <laughs> Mummy's talking with the grown-ups now, isn't she? Hmm? She's talking with the big people, that's right. <laughs> so listening, ah, uh, ears on, listening. Mummy talking, Jordan listening, thank you. Mummy wants you to go and play with the little people. Go and play with Tuscany and Aspidistra. <laughs> and please, will you stop picking on Sarah? She's visually impaired. <laughs> Give her the crayon. <laughs> the thing is, they'll never just leave it at that, will they? They always have to look back at you and say, see, if you just explain it to them clearly, they understand you and they respect you. 
And I go, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm always looking at the three-year-old and the three-year-old's always looking back up at mum like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, bang on, mum, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was rude. No, no, fair cop, I was out of line. Uh, look, I'll tell you what, I'll hang back. I'll uh, play with the little people. And when I see you finish talking, not a minute before, eh, I'll just slide back in and ask for your attention then. Because, hey, Mum, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> and I respect you for it. <laughs> Fuck knows I don't want any more bleach in the eye from your friend. 